Hey, what's going on everybody? So for today's video on tying Puget Sound Sea Run Cutthroat Flies, I'm going to be tying a little pattern I've been tying and fishing a lot lately. And it's basically a deceiver. Um, most saltwater fly tires are familiar with Lefty Cray's deceiver. And this is more or less just a scaled down kind of micro version of it. Um, I like to tie small bait fish patterns for the winter when there's not a ton of like big herring and stuff out in the sound. And these little bait fish patterns, these little deceivers have been really getting it done for me lately. Um, it's a really fun fly for me to tie, I think. Um, you can tie them in a million different color combinations. You can use different materials. I really don't have any, any set recipe. Um, I sort of sit down at the vise and with the intent of tying some of these and I just sort of mix and match materials and try different stuff. Um, not overly complicated, pretty simple little pattern and uh, really been digging it. So um, to get started, I'm tying this on a, this is an A-Rex SA280 hook. It's a fairly new hook from A-Rex. I've only been tying on them for about, oh, maybe six weeks, some two months, something like that. Um, but I'm really, really digging these, these hooks. They're super sharp, kind of a short shank wide gap hook. Great for little bait fish patterns like this. Um, it's kind of similar to the Gamakatsu SC15, only this hook's not going to bend out. It's really, really heavy and stout, um, which I think is good for this kind of pattern. It kind of helps it, it keel properly and swim, swim correctly and all that. Um, this is a size 4. Again, it's an SA280 from A-Rex. Um, so to get started, I'm just going to lay down a thread base. I'm using some Vivas 10 uh white thread and get that started and then just run the run the thread back oh pretty close to the where the barb would be and the first step is I'm gonna tie in the tail and that's gonna be made from three saddle hackle feathers um, you could use more you could use less I've just been using three lately um, I've got two um, they're kind of a kind of a light pink and one that is a it's like a kingfisher blue but it's it's black barred um, pretty pretty cool color combo I've just had this package of this stuff forever so I've been using it a lot lately um, so I'm just gonna get these sort of uh, leveled together the tips pretty close I've kind of tried to get the blue one um, sandwiched in the middle uh, that doesn't always work and I'm not sure that it matters and I'm gonna measure these out. I don't want this to be a super long pattern. I'm going for about inch and a half or so with this particular one. And I'm just gonna tie these in right on top of the hook. And I'm gonna do a, one loose wrap and that'll help it kinda stay in place and then I'll make some tight wraps. Um, these things, they definitely don't have to be perfect they don't have to be perfectly straight or or anything um, it's kind of the one of the cool things about tying this pattern it's pretty easy get that trimmed off and get this secured nice and good then I'm gonna take um, this is smolt blue crystal flash I'm gonna take oh two or three strands gonna get uh, get three here And then I've also got, I think this is UV pink. Get about three of those. Kind of get them together. Get the tips fairly close. They don't have to be perfect. Um, I kind of want them uneven, but I don't want one that's, you know, half inch past all the others. And I'm just going to keep this simple and tie these right down on top of the hook. Um, sometimes I'll tie it in on each side, you know, the near side, and then fold it over to the far side. But right here, I'm just going right on top, uh, keeping this pretty simple. So next will be some, just some diamond flat braid. This is pearl, and this is just going to be the body. So I'm going to tie that in right on top here. Catch it. And I'm going to wrap that forward towards the eye, and that'll just kind of be the pearl body of this fly. I'm going to 
wrap this forward to about oh quarter inch maybe behind the eye of the hook get that tied down you could certainly put some UV resin or some uh, some glue on there to, to add some durability I'm not going to in this case um, next up is going to be bucktail this is a I don't know kingfisher blue or some sort of bright blue again I don't have any particular recipe that I go with here so I'm just gonna go with what I'm I've got here take a clump of that and pull out all the the under fur uh, the biggest key with this fly is to, is to keep it really sparse you really don't need a lot of materials um, if you load this up with materials it doesn't want to swim right keep it nice and sparse and it'll it'll swim great for you so you really don't need much bucktail at all here this is just sort of the middle color anyway so get that sort of picked clean and I want that oh about three quarters of the length of the tail maybe somewhere in that ballpark I don't want it all the way back I want to be able to give it some taper and I'm going to tie this in more or less right behind the eye of the hook. I'm going to do just a few little wraps here and kind of make sure that it's centered, maybe fanned out just a little bit. And then I'm not going to wrap this back super far. Um, and this is just personal personal preference, but if you, if you do a bunch of thread wraps back, it um, has a tendency to push everything down flat. I like the bucktail kind of flared up a little bit. That's just me. Um, next I'm going to add a little bit of blue flash. This is uh, chroma flash. This is like a, I think it's like an ocean blue or something like that. I can't remember. I don't have the package. Uh, really cool blue color though. And I've just got like five or six strands of this. Uh, definitely don't need a, need a ton measure that out about the same as the bucktail tie that in right on top make sure it's kind of centered like to kind of pull them make sure they're sort of spread out a little bit on top that looks good enough Next up, I got some pink bucktail. So this is going to be kind of a blue and pink uh, color combo. I've been fishing this particular particular color quite a bit lately, and it's been producing well for me. Uh, both Sea Run Cutthroat and Coho have been eating this one. So I'll cut off a clump and again pull out the, the under fur and short fibers and get this nice and sparse. Just a few less than that. There we go. And I'm going to make the pink, I don't know, I make it just a smidge longer than the blue. Uh, that's just personal preference. Trim those ends. I'm going to tie that in also right on top. Make sure that it's sort of centered. Sometimes it wants to go a little bit to one side or the other that, again really probably doesn't matter but Let's see if you come back with it it doesn't want to flare up as much so oh, right there I'm going to top that with some uh, ripple ice fiber in pink absolutely love ripple ice fiber I put this on a lot of flies I have every color that they make of this I think um, great great stuff same thing I don't need a ton of this I just want to have some flash on the top measure that out Tie that in right on top. Looks pretty good. One kind of long one there. 
Okay, now I'm going to flip this upside down, tie in a belly. It's got some white bucktail. Pretty simple. Cut off a little clump of that. Same thing as before. Kind of pick it, pick it clean. I want a really, really sparse belly. Uh, if you load up a lot of stuff on the underside of this hook, it has a tendency to affect how it swims. So just not too much. I'm going to go maybe halfway back um, the tail. And then get that tied in. Again, making sure that it's centered. I'll kind of take it and pull it, kind of work it back beyond the, the hook. Then I'm going to take, I don't always do this, but I'm going to take a little bit of, uh, this is Predator Wrap. Um, sometimes I use Minnow Belly or um, doesn't, don't need a ton of it, but I'm just going to, this is clear or pearl, or I can't remember. But I just want to, uh, just want to get some sparkle on the belly, just a little bit. Again, not very much. Kind of measure that out close to the length of that belly. Tie that in. Do the same thing, just kind of work it past the, the bend of the hook there. Then I'm going to put in a little bit of ripple ice fiber in red. Um, this is just going to be to simulate gills. So I'll pull out a bit of this. Don't need a ton. Just want a, want a little bit of red in there. So I'm going to take this. This is probably, I don't know, three or four inches long. And uh, leave it long and just trim one, one end flush so I can tie it in easily. Tie that in right on top of the, the belly. And then the reason that I leave it long is then I can... Just basically grab a hold of it and pull it straight up and trim it to the length that I want. And I just want like an eighth of an inch. Not a lot sticking out there. And then I'll save this. If I'm tying a handful of these, I'll save this and just reuse it and go right down the line with it. So that's going to be it on materials. So I will kind of finish that head. It doesn't have to be pretty because I'm going to cover that up. Just do a quick whip finish. And then I'm going to finish this. Um, you could definitely just do a standard like epoxy or UV resin head, but I'm going to use a fish mask from Flyman Fish Company. These little plastic heads, these are super easy to use and they look great. And I like to put it on first. This is a size 4. Put it on and just see how it fits forehand if it's great so I'm going to use some uh, this is golf uh, this is the fat man I believe UV resin um, it's thicker it's not going to run around as much and I'm just gonna put a little bit of this kind of work a little blob around the head not gonna go too crazy I don't want it to push back into the materials when I slide the head on there I just want enough to get that head good and secured hair too much we'll see now I'm going to take my fish mask and just kind of slowly slide this on and work it back I'm trying not to make a mess of this resin and push it into the materials too badly um, there we go make sure that that head is centered um, not all cockeyed because that'll kind of make it look goofy and sometimes make it swim a little goofy and then shoot that with the light um, I'm gonna make sure that I hit this enough that it really really cures up and 
that's going to be what holds this this head on there. I've never had one come off, um, but uh, I see I got some little excess resin fill out the bottom there, but that's no big deal. Certainly not a perfectionist when it comes to my tying, that's for sure. And then I'm just going to finish that up with some eyes. I'm using uh, three millimeter red eyes from Fly Tires Dungeon, just for basic adhesive eyes. And I'm going to put a little bit of uh, thin UV resin. This is uh, Deer Creek Fine UV resin. Put that just a dab of it inside where the recess is for the eyes. Don't need a ton, I just want to get enough that I can secure this thing. Put the eye on there and then I'm just going to take a bodkin needle and make sure that eye is sort of pushed down and, and centered. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I think you could actually use four millimeter eyes. I like the little bit smaller eyes on this pattern. Um, being a pretty small pattern and um, but four I think four millimeter eyes fit in this size four if I recall fish mask so I'll shoot that and then just put some more on top just kind of encapsulate the whole whole eyeball in there and make sure it's covered and not gonna go anywhere it drives me nuts when a eye falls out of these things which does happen on occasion um, I know that a one-eyed fly will catch fish no problem, but it always just bugs me when one kind of falls off of there. So I'll just do the same thing on the other side. A little bit of resin. It's stuck on my finger. Get that eye pushed down and centered as best I can. It certainly doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just a little obsessive about it. I'm a big believer that you gotta gotta be happy with how a fly looks if you're gonna fish it confidently. I don't know if you're like me, I'll tie a half dozen of a pattern and have them in my box and there's always one or two that just look better to my eye than the other ones and those are the, the ones that I always reach for the first and then as I, I lose them, I fish the other ones and they catch just as many fish but in my head I just don't feel as good about it. It's funny how that works but confidence is a confidence is a funny thing in fishing so again just some more resin on there make sure that's covered up and not going to go anywhere if it bangs on something hit that with the light that's going to be about it. Um, one thing that I will do, or I try to do with these uh, fish helmets is I try to slide them far enough back that I can then use a little uh, mono thread and put a cover up the little bit of material that's sticking out the front there. Um, with this particular one, it doesn't look like there's enough room yeah, maybe I'll try it. It also kind of builds up a little bit of a... Yeah, that's not really... A little bit of a bump there, just in case that thing was to come loose, it wouldn't slide off. Uh, definitely not a needed step. I don't think I've ever lost one of these things, but... I like to cover up that any of that material and that's just a personal preference again not anything to do with how it fishes that didn't didn't work super well but oh well that'll fish just fine 
that's it. There you go. Just a, a little tiny, got tiny deceiver pattern. Um, great sea run cutthroat and coho fly. Again, you can tie these in, in all kinds of colors. Um, you can tie them bigger, smaller. Well, I don't know how much smaller you can get, but um, Lefty's deceiver has caught, you know, saltwater fish and probably freshwater fish all around the world. Great, great pattern. Um, very, very simple to tie and uh, effective. So give it a shot. Try some different color combos, different material combos. Add some to your box. If they work for you, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear about it. And thanks for watching.